Okay, so here we go, of a review of some of the finishes that people keep asking about on the site. Three tins of Osmo, Dulux, standard old Danish oil, and a couple from Aldi. Um, as you can see, it's a nice piece of tulip wood. I'm going to slop some on. I won't bore you with the details, but uh, hopefully it will go on nice and... I'll then cut to the video of how it looks once I've put it on. Right, the Aldi one is the medium wood finish. And as you can see, it's quite opaque, but not too thick. So my painting skills are never the best, but it's not going on too bad. Um, I'll just finish this square off and then I'll get on to the next one. Next one I'm going to do is the clear one, which for some reason looks like cottage cheese. But we'll give it a whirl and see how that looks. I'm not using the best quality brushes, they're just cheap ones. Uh, I don't want to go mad, it's only for a test. As you can see, it's going on probably the same as the last one. Uh, I'll finish this one off and move on to the next one. Next one is one I haven't tried yet. It's a glossy, glossy one from Osmo. Same sort of stuff. You need a very small amount. Uh, let's put that on. And I'll come back to you when I've painted the square. Right, the next one is the Osmo One Coat, which is normally for exteriors. Um, but I've put it on here because I, I had a tin and I thought I'd just show you how opaque it is. Again, it needs a tiny, tiny amount, um, but not as much as the... Oh, it needs, certainly needs a lot more than the others, but I think that's more to do with how thick it is, or how thick you need the colouring. It does more or less block out most of the wood, um, as you can see, certainly on this wood. I've used it on pine, and you can still see some of the grain through the pine some of the pattern uh, it might just be too dark for this tulip wood uh, I'll come back to you when I've evened it out a bit right as you can see the Osmo rosewood dyed the wood pretty well but all but obliterated the color of the tulip wood that is highlighted in the others uh, mm. Not impressed really. It's it's fantastic for outside wood, but for inside, maybe a little bit too much pigment. Um, not the best choice. So now this is this is recommended by Dulux. I went to a shop, uh, the decorator shop, and they said use this on things like outside furniture. Um, I have to say it's nice and thin. Looks bloody awful in the can, but. It's going on pretty well, and I'll paint up my square and come back and show you. Right, done the Dulux, on to everybody's old favourite, Danish oil. Now, as everybody knows, you buy a tin of Danish oil, you open it, and six months later you go back to the can, and it's gone as thick as treacle. But... You can add a bit of thinners to it, or a bit of white spirit, and thin it down. You're not really supposed to, but you can. Uh, it just means you've got to brush the lumps out when you start applying it. Um, there we go. It's bringing out the grain nice, the pattern in the wood. Pretty good. Um, I tend to find tins of Danish oil at boot sales for a quid or so. It's very expensive to buy now. It's about £12 a tin, maybe something like that. Um, and it takes a while to dry because of all the solvents in it. You need well, good ventilation. Um, I'll finish this off and I'll come back to you. Right, finished application. It's only um, one coat. Because most of them say you can just put one coat on. Especially the Osmo, which just goes so far, or a little bit. Um, as you can see... Nice thick coat on everything, or nice thin coat on everything, I suppose. Um, I'll leave it to dry overnight and come back tomorrow and see how they look. Maybe they might need another coat. 
who knows but I'll test it with one and see how resilient they all are now I've got to try and get all the lids shut um, only drawback so far is I've noticed the Aldi tins the lids have started to rust inside and obviously if you've got a clear coat that looks white then if you get any rust drops in that it's going to change the colour you might get rust in your wood if you're doing oak that's not a good thing because you'll get black marks um, the Osmo tins seem gummed up after a little while but most tins do uh, let you know what happens tomorrow right it's been 24 hours since I left it all to dry it's dried and as you can see there's a hell of a difference between the stains but then that's what you'd expect some of them were different colors uh, i'm going to give it all a little bit of a rub with some wire wool because despite the fact it says it doesn't raise the grain it has so i won't let you watch that because that's pretty boring right i've given it a bit of a rub down with some wire wool not particularly fine wire wool just what i'd laying around uh, I've opened the tins and I'm going to give it all a bit more of a coat. There's no need for you to watch that because that's quite boring as well. Right, they've all had a second coat. Uh, I think in the case of the rosewood I've made a bit of a mistake because that says on the tin, one coat. And as you can see, the second coat looks like toffee. Um, the rest of it has all gone pretty well. So I'm going to give it another 24 hours and let it all dry then I'll come back with the results. Okay, um, all the finishes I've put on have had over 24 hours to dry, more like 48. And now the big test. Uh, Tesco's finest red wine. And I'm going to put it in the syringe rather than me float the grass around and I'm going to spill it everywhere. Now obviously this would cause quite a few screams and shouts if you just finished a lot of furniture. But there we go. Now I could leave it to dry, but I'm probably not going to bother. So, nasty red. Okay, I've got a handy cloth, which is just an old t-shirt. Let's see if it wipes off the finishes I put on. Well, that's pretty good. That's just Danish oil. That's Dulux, Light Oak. This is the horrible, horrible, nasty one that I shouldn't have bothered with, really. Um, this is the Pollux Clear Gloss. As you can see, it just beads off that. Pollux Silk ma uh, Satin Matte. Again, just wipes off. Aldi Clear. Wipes off. Yeah, not as well actually. Some little residual marks there. You can see them. It's still quite quite sticky. And the Aldi medium brown. So let's wipe that off as well. Before it sets. Okay. To be honest, all pretty good. Um, I have to say, I think the Danish oil and the Osmo are pretty good. The Aldi is quite wet to the touch, so I imagine some of that's soaked in. Um, the Pollux isn't isn't wet. Right, I'm going to get another stain and try something else. Okay, I'm back. I've been raiding the cupboards for something I can think is the worst possible stain you can ever put on wood, and it's this bad boy. When you make a curry, uh, turmeric. It'll stain a worktop. It goes through the plastic because the molecules in the turmeric are smaller than the molecules on the plastic. You can't even bleach it off. It's a nightmare. Um, so here we go. Now, I'm putting it on liberally, as you can see. And it really does stain anything. I suppose for a control, I could use a little bit of wood. Just a bit of scrap wood I've got laying around. I'll show you on there. Just give it a bit of a rub in. As you can see, it's instantly into the wood. Pretty nasty stuff. Right, get my trusty new cloth and I'll try and wipe it off. Not bad at all on the Danish oil. 
Helix come off. Pollux just wipes straight off, doesn't grip. A little bit on the edges there, but I think that's because it's picked up on the Aldi. Um, yeah, stained the Aldi, no problem. You can see that. Um, Aldi medium, you can't really tell because it's already brown, but it's certainly, it's, well, it's really changed the colour of the Aldi one. But the Pollux is fine. Similarly, Danish oil is fine, pretty much. Maybe a little bit of staining. And the dew looks, looks okay. I'm not going to worry about this one, obviously. I completely messed that one up. Um, and as you can see, it's it's well stained, my t-shirt. Pretty conclusive, really. I would say that these two are fine economy, if you're never going to spill turmeric on it. These are outstanding. Ignore that one. This isn't too bad, but, you know, it's quite reasonably priced, I think. It's about 10 or 12 quid a tin, or it was. And the Danish oil is surprisingly well, although under the light in this camera, it still looks like it's stained a bit of yellow. But back to the Osmo, nothing. So it's sealed the surface. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and why Pollux is worth the cash. Oh, sorry, Osmo is worth the cash. I just remembered after the um, final video that I cut the other day that one of the biggest tests and one of the things that spoils a lot of people's work is when someone comes along with a hot cup of tea. Now it's not tea but it's just boiling water out of the kettle. Now one of the best stains that stood up was Danish oil and the other ones were the Osmo. So here we go. I'm going to put that tea on there and what I'll do is I'll let's have a bit of a slop. See how that looks. And same with the Danish oil. Now this has just come out of the kettle. So it's probably the worst thing you could probably do, ever do to a bit of wood. Um, let's give it a couple of minutes and I'll cut back to this. Right, I've left that for a couple of minutes. And I've got a nice cloth here. So I'm going to show you the results of hot cup of tea on Danish oil. Can't really see anything. No? No ring? Nothing at all really. So that's pretty good. And it has had a, quite a while to dry uh, since I did the original test, maybe a couple of days or so. So the varnish would have gone pretty hard. Uh, the Osmo, similarly, as you can see, the moisture just beads up on the Osmo. And I'm trying to tip that off, you can see most of it just runs off. Um, see that white? Again, pretty, pretty clear. Interestingly, I don't know whether you can see this, the one on the right was the glossy, the one on the left was the satin. Mm. It's only a little bit of a difference, it's not really glossy. But there we go, again, conclusive tests. Uh, seems like the Danish oil is a cheap alternative, a cheaper alternative to the Osmo, but I don't think it's anywhere near as good. Um, but it's up to you, the Osmo's £30 a tin, the Danish oil, maybe 10 12 bit more work, it's up to you.